guitar practice session 92624. These are relatively sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to work on and then give you a recap so you have an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions help me out with a routine, verbalize the things I'm trying to learn, getting them in my head a little bit better, possibly providing information for others learning similar things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to practice the things that I'm practicing here. So I use this worksheet for the practice sessions and I like to get everything lined up going the same way. So this is what I do that might be a little bit different than what other people might be doing. And then I'm gonna have the low or heavy string on top so that if I'm positioned behind the guitar, I'm visualizing my fretboard from the same perspective uh, top to bottom, left to right, and I'll actually put my guitar on the screen so it looks like I'm left-handed so that you can envision what I'm playing kind of like it's yourself from behind the guitar. I'll even try to line it up so that basically my hand will be in the position I'm working on, which is going to be fret 9 uh, through 13 to try to make it as easily easy to visualize as possible. I'll also give you access, maybe if I can, to the worksheet and don't worry about plagiarizing or anything like that because I do think that if you want to do your own practice sessions or anything, use the worksheet, adjust the worksheet or do whatever you want to do with it. It's a, I think it's a really good way to try to learn things because you're trying to verbalize uh, things in a way that you wouldn't otherwise do if you're trying to just kind of learn things in your head. So I think that depends on your learning style and whatnot, but I think it's helpful. Okay, so this time we're going into what I'm calling shape uh, number three. You could also call it the D shaped uh, with the cage system or the Dorian shape if you want to call it that. We'll talk about those different naming conventions which are useful to know not only because you can communicate with other people who might name their things differently, but also it's just a useful way to have different perspectives on the shapes that we're going to be breaking the guitar into. And then we're looking at the Aeolian mode, which is what I'm calling absolute mode number six. Remembering that I am going to be basically using absolute mode numbers based on the major scale. So if the Ionian mode is the first mode, the sixth of it would be the Aeolian. That helps us to orientate and use a little bit of kind of math, just adding and subtracting to get uh, to get where to orientate ourselves as we go th through the relative positions of each of the modes. Now then within each of these shapes that we've broken out, I further break out the shapes into what I'm calling, if you think of the guitar as a five string instrument with an extra E string, right? So it's five, six strings minus one string because of the extra E string, five string instrument. You can break out within these shapes between two types of sh two formats that are common that I see others doing and that would be a two string group a two string group and a one string group and that's what I'm going to be calling my house analogy with the double stop or with the house double stop and the in the double stop house and then a two note per string flat and then you can also break it out into a three note string group and a two note string group which is often done from a pentatonic perspective uh, and I would call that my hamburger and barbell analogy. So as I go through this, I'm going to try to look at both of those ways of seeing these shapes, each of which I think has their pros and cons, which is a little bit convoluted, but hopefully uh, I'm getting better at it so that we can kind of see it from multiple different perspectives as we go through the same shape. Now also note that I usually was thinking that this, this, this shape right here uh, the, the, hand, the, the, the house shape is not what people usually use when they use the pentatonic because with the pentatonic they usually envision it with this hamburger barbell shape uh, and then you can add the two extra notes to it. But I do think that you can also visualize uh, the pentatonic using this shape as well which, which is also useful. So as we go through these shapes we'll consider each analogy the house analogy and the hamburger barbell analogy and then try to uh, envision them on which notes would be removed if we had a five note pentatonic scale with those groupings versus a, a seven note major or or modal scale based on those groupings remembering that the pentatonic fits be beautifully into what we're working on now the aeolian mode as well as the ionian mode but also can be used as a skeleton 
when we look at the other modes to, to then add the added two notes to, to get from a five note to a seven note, which we'll take a look at as we keep on continue on with more modes as we'll do later uh, in future presentations. So that's basically what we do. We go through the intervals going up and back, and then I kind of wear out after just one octave. I didn't, I didn't go up to the next uh, octave, and then I start just noodling around with this idea again. I'm still thinking about these shapes leaning back this way. So I start noodling around playing, uh, the, trying to work into my plane these shapes where I'm going to be, be going from like this is a C shape, uh, if a, a C major and the, the first of the Ionian, and then this would be like the Dorian, which would be the D minor. And if I put those together, you got C, D, E, F, G, A, you, ha you have a scale. Uh, and so I've been trying to play like this scale and then play this scale from, from C to D, from B to C, from A to B. So that would be like the C, the Ionian and then the, the Locrian and then the minor scale based on these lean back shapes, which are based on just the three note pentatonic that I could just clump together and come up with these scale shapes, which I don't think I haven't really like really thought of that, those in particular when I'm trying to noodle around. So I'm just trying to see if that leads my fingering just due to, to the constructs of my hands to do different things uh, as I try to work around a shape that's that's different rather than a shape that that usually we work within which is going to be like this hamburger barbell type of shape so this one's just another way to kind of visualize the chord which might help us to like break out of the box a little bit or move in between uh the boxes and and so on and so forth so i was kind of noodling around with that and and then i think i just went into like playing in over here i was playing in like g g minor just doing the same stuff i usually do in uh, A minor, but like in uh, G minor, and I just kind of mess with that for a while, and that's basically, that's it. Continuing on with what I would call shape number three, looking at mode number six, the Aeolian mode, otherwise known as the main minor mode, the main minor scale. We're gonna be using the absolute numbering system based on the key, the central point of the major scale as the number one mode, otherwise known as the Ionian mode. So if the Ionian mode or major scale is number one mode, then the Aeolian will be the sixth of it being absolute mode number six in relation to the major scale. Of course, it's a minor mode given the fact that it has a minor or lowercase Roman numeral. So therefore we're gonna be in the minor scale, otherwise known as the Aeolian mode. We're gonna have the first through the seventh which are the relative positions which change depending on the mode that we are in. But then we're gonna assign the related modes to those positions using the absolute mode numbers based on the Ionian mode being the number one that will help hopefully to orientate us as we go through the process. When we look at the intervals, we wanna kind of memorize these intervals because the modes are typically broken down into the minor modes and the major modes and their distinctive characteristic is the third. Minor modes have a minor third, three note away, minor third. The major modes have a four note away, major third. And all of the other modes, we would like to compare either to the related minor or the related major. And as we do that, then every other mode will typically only have one interval difference than its related minor or major. In order for us to do that, we have to basically remember all of the intervals for the majors and the minors. The intervals were constructed based on the major scale. So when you think about the major scale, it's somewhat easy because it's all perfects or majors. With the minor scale, it's a little bit more difficult. It's kind of what you would think, all of the all perfects and then a minor, but it has that major second as well, which is kind of confusing. So we have a per we just have to kind of memorize these intervals for the minor. So we've got the perfect first, so that's the same in the major and the minor. We've got the two note away major second, which is funny because you would think it would be a minor second, but it's not. It's it's the same as in the major scale, a major second. You can almost think of it as like another perfect in a way because it's the same in both. And then the third, the defining characteristic, of course, is a minor third, three note away minor third, and then the fourth 
is a five note away perfect fifth, just like the major, the perfects are the same in the majors and the minor. Uh, the, that's the fourth. The fifth is a seven note away perfect fifth, uh, and that's the same in the major and the minor. And then we have, of course, the six, which is a minor six, eight note away minor six, and then the seven, a 10 note away minor seven instead of a major seven, which would be 11 notes away. All right, and so then if I go over here, we look at our shape, remembering that I'm gonna name these shape uh, shapes different things. I'm trying to get different ways that I can break the shapes out and name those shapes and, and try to think about the pros and cons of the different naming conventions that people have come up with. One naming convention is just to call it shape three, because if this is shape one, and then shape two starts here or here, and then shape three would start here. So that's one naming convention. You're just gonna use the middle shape that people are most common used as number one, as the focal point. Many people do that. I think it's useful, a useful naming system. Personally, I do that. But I also have the caged system where I think actually the second most used or most useful naming system to me is really still trying to name it by the modes. So in other words, this one, if I look at the top string, I'm gonna call it, and, and I just play the shape out from there, then I would be in the Dorian mode. So I can name it by the, by the first note of the chord, remembering that I could play any mode in the shape, I would just start somewhere else, but I can name it after that top note where I would typically, where I would start the shape, and that would be, and that's another naming convention that I think is useful that way. Uh, and then people name it after the caged system, which which is great, especially if you're playing in the major scale. It's a little bit harder to kind of say the shape that you're in when you're not in the major scale, because then I'm I'm playing like for example in A minor here, and for me to name the shape based on the major scales, most people would have to say, okay, what's the relative major? And that's going to be the Ionian, which is a C, and then find the C here and say, okay, there's my C. And if I was to build a chord off of that, it would look like this. Or you can see that little triangle up top, which is a D. And so that it's a D shape. So I can name this whole shape after the D shape. So it's a little bit wonky that I have to go back to the, to like look at the major to do that. But it's also quite nice because that three note, like these open positions have three notes in them. They still only fit uniquely in the five note pentatonic position. So I can name all the shapes based on the five note pentatonic position around those three note shapes and then put the added two notes on top of it, which is what we're kind of kind of work on here. Now inside of the shape, once I'm in the shape, I can further break the shape down into its components that we're going to see repeated all over the fretboard. And, and remember, every time you see this repeated part of the shape, you can kind of think, you know, as though you're in the related shape, like, like you could see you can see this this box uh, double stop here repeats up here. So you probably might like know a shape that has the box double stop here. This would be like what I would call shape number two. And then you can say, well, here's the box double stop. I'm gonna pretend I'm on the top string playing that same shape, right? Except that I have to deal with the kink and the tuning. And then that's another way that you can kind of visualize the guitar. So these learning of these shapes inside, I think is useful. There's the, str the guitar is a five stringed instrument with two, uh, two E strings. So you can think about it as a five string instrument with an extra E string. And if I do that, I can break down the shapes inside here to either common groupings would be two string, two string, one string, or a three string, two string grouping. I've seen people do both. I'm gonna try to memorize both in my practice sessions here. So if I did it as a, I would call this the house analogy, which would be two strings, which would be what I call the house here, the box, double stop. And then you have uh, the double stop box, which is gonna be here. And then you have uh, the two note per string hamburger shape. And then, so that's one way I've seen people memorize it. And I think it's useful because this little box is very distinct, gr a distinct grouping. Uh, but it doesn't fit beautifully into the pentatonic shape to think about it that way, typically. Uh, probably could kind of squeeze that in. I was wondering if that'd be useful to think about. You know, now that I think about it, you probably could, 
think about it this way and then and then think about the pentatonic within that shape so maybe i'll i'll try to encompass that into my thought process as we go through here see if that uh, has any benefit to it but most people think about the pentatonic shape as a three two breakout meaning they think about this what i'm calling the hamburger and then this green one is the barbell the barbell looks funny here because we're on the earthquake the fault line the kink in the tuning so it would normally look like i'm gonna put a box over here it would normally look like this where you have you play the outer bits the outer bits but in here uh, and here, of course, it's staggered up because of the kink in the tuning. And so so then so we can think of it that way, which a lot mo a lot of people do. And if you do that, of course, you'll start to see this shape everywhere and possibly this barbell shape everywhere. But I think more likely people will start to see this hamburger shape everywhere and start playing that little uh, shape. And if you play that shape, then remember that the the pentatonic lends itself beautifully to what we're looking at now the minor scale as well as the major scale and but it doesn't fit as nicely into the other modes because the other modes need the missing notes in order to sound like that mode so so we've talked about that in prior presentations we'll continue on that when we go to the other modes but even when we're playing the the major and minor we can always add those added two notes so the, so these are the ones that are outside here that we'll have to add as we go through basically our analogy so that'll be the process. Okay, so let's just run through this, go a little bit faster uh, today. See if I can go a little bit faster, get through more before I wear out. So we'll go from here to here. So where are my roots then? My roots, if I'm looking, now first of all, how do I know where my minor is? If I know this is my Dorian shape, Dorian, is the second of the major scale. So if I'm saying, well, this is a Dorian shape because I start on that that uh, that D up top, then I can say, okay, well, if that's number two, I need to get up to number six. So I could just play through the shape, two, three, four, five, uh, six, to get to this A and say, so that's one way I can say, okay, there's the A within the Dorian shape. I was toying with naming the shape based on where I'm at, right? That's gonna be the, one, two, three, four, five. So I'd be shape number, uh, note five, uh, note five, uh, Aeolian or minor shape. Meaning I could try to name the shapes by how far up the, the mode that I'm in is. So if I'm looking at a minor mode and I'm looking at what I would call shape number three, I could call it one, two, three, four, five, note five, note five minor mode right meaning i'm looking for the shape where the fifth note in the shape is where the minor mode would start not many people do that but i thought that might be interesting to try to see the shapes that way so i can name each shape by the mode by listing out where the mode starts in the shape i don't know i was just toying with that so in any case we have that so then we're going to go from here and then the octave is going to be uh, down here so this one where is it located well the minor mode is not in the house because I see this as C's house right it's basically the major house although Phrygian lives in the basement down here which is a minor mode and then so it does its own thing it's over here in the flat uh, two, two note per string when you think about it from the house analogy and it's actually the same shape in the analogy of the hamburger it's the meat of the hamburger the right side of the meat of the hamburger so and then down here it's going to be on on the top of the double stop box top of the double stop box and uh in, in the house analogy and then in the barbell analogy you can see this barbell that's not staggered it's on the left side of the barbell remember if, when the pentatonic is played we only play the outer bits of the barbell and so so that means on this side that's where the weights are at the minors at the bottom of the barbell it's in, and then on top of it is the next heaviest might maybe even heavier minor mode because it has a minor second and then on the right side of the barbell you've got the the uh, main major and then the mixolydian modes okay so let's walk up the shape here so we're and so then well let's do the let's do the hell steps and half steps 
So if I go from here, let's copy this. To, to, yeah, wait, I have it over here. So if I go from the first to the second, that's basically like a pinky to pointer. So I know that's going to be a whole step. So the first of the of the minor scale to the second of the minor scale is a whole step. The second of the minor scale to the third of the minor scale is a half step. The third to the fourth of the minor scale is a whole step. The fourth to the fifth of the minor scale is a whole step. The fifth to the sixth of the minor scale is a half step. The sixth to the seventh of the minor scale is a whole step. And then the seven to the eight of the minor scale is a whole step. Okay, so that means so where are where are my half steps then? The half steps are always in what I call the house or the box. And notice that the minor mode starts right before you hit the box. So we have a whole step to get to the top of the box, and then we have our half step. So we're gonna go one to two, and then two to three is our half step. And then when we're at the top of the box, there's only one note in between before we get back to the bottom of the box, which is of course where our other half step is. So it goes one, two to three is a half step, F uh, three to four, four to five, five to six is our other half step. So two to three, five to six. So one, two, three, there's our half step, four, five, six, there's our other half step. Okay, let's go ahead and just count this thing up and go through our, our shapes here going from this A. So if I say we're gonna go to the second of the Aeolian, what is the second of the Aeolian or minor mode? It's of course gonna be a major second, which is the funny one, cause you'd think it'd be a minor second, but no, it's almost like a perfect because it's the same on the major scale and the minor scale. So we're gonna say then, we know, we know that that's a two note away because I, I'm just gonna see the shape as pinky to pointer as two notes away. Uh, that's one way I wanna see it. And I'm gonna, I can count, I could say that from here to here is five, four, three, two, gets me back to two over here. So that means the inverse would be 12 minus two, uh, which would be 10, which would be a 10 note away minor seven. Remember, the inverse of a major is a minor. So I can prove that by going from this B and counting up 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 gets me to the A. So if I think about it as a circle, if I went this way, which is normally the way I would think from top to bottom, A to B, that's a two note away major second. But if I went from bottom to top, 10 note away uh, minor seven. And then I'm also gonna say the second of mode number six, the Aeolian mode. Remember that I'm numbering these modes based on the major scale. So if the major scale or Ionian is one, then the Aeolian is the sixth of the major scale. And to get to the sixth, I would have to count up five, five, right? So I'd have to say to, to count up from one, it would be two, three, four, five, six, which would be, would be five steps from one to get to six. So therefore the formula is always gonna be whatever mode I'm on, which is the sixth minus one, which is the number of steps to get there from one to six, which would give me five plus whatever, uh, whatever relative position I'm on, which is two of the scale I'm in, gives me my mode. So six minus one is five plus two is seven. That's gonna be the Locrian mode. So we have the Locrian mode then, which is mode number seven. That's the uh, diminished uh, mode. And so if I think about my analogies, where does that live? Well, if I think about it in terms of the double stop house analogy, it's in the, the attic of the house. So this is C's house. C's looking towards the ocean up here and it, up in the attic on the left-hand side, that's where the crazy Locrian is. Uh, and that's where it is on that analogy. Now also note, I'm gonna to try to think about what, where, how can I convert this box double stop to the pentatonic shape? If this was the pentatonic shape and you're thinking of it in terms of a box, in, in terms of a box uh, barbell, uh, where, what, 
the notes that would be included are only uh, the Phrygian and the the uh, the the major. So so these two of the box are included in the pentatonic, while these two in the box are the ones that are excluded from the pentatonic. The Locrian, of course, and then the uh, and then the Lydian. And if I think about it in terms of the hamburger analogy, uh, we could say we have our hamburger bar barbell. And so the, so the Locrian notice, of course, is not in the hamburger. So if I was to play the pentatonic scale, I wouldn't play the, the, the Locrian or the B here. If I want to add it going from a five note pentatonic to a seven note, then the, the hamburger is going to have like a Z to it. Meaning, I imagine I put a cap on the hamburger, like a baseball cap towards the ocean up here, which is going to make it stick out this way. And then I'm going to imagine that in order to support that, I need a other support leg uh, back here to support the main support of the hamburger C. And so that's where you get this kind of Z shape, the bun of the hamburger extending on the top and extending to the left on the bottom. All right. And then let's go to the next one. So we're going to go then to the next one, which is the third. So the third of uh, the Aeolian or minor mode is, of course, the defining characteristic, the third, as to whether it's a major or minor mode. This is a minor mode. It's the main minor. Therefore, it's a three note away minor third. How do I know that? Well, I just want to know that shape. I want to know that shape and say, OK, if I'm going from from this shape, I want to see it as a three note away minor third, of course. But I can also count it. I can say this is going to be five up here, four, three. And I can say that the uh, inverse is going to be 12 minus three, which is nine, nine note away uh, major six. The inverse of a minor is typically a major. So if I see that shape, I'm going to say, oh, that shape is when I play top to bottom, uh, a minor third, three note away minor third. If I play then from bottom to top, therefore, it's a nine note away major six. All right, let's go. And then the third of mode number three, Aeolian or minor mode, uh, I'm sorry, mode number six, Aeolian or minor mode is six minus one, which is five plus the relative position three, five, six, seven, eight, only seven modes. Therefore, eight minus seven is one. That gives me the mode number one, Ionian, otherwise known as the major scale. Where does the major scale live? In the house double stop analogy, it's always in the box, right? It's the top right of the box. It's in the penthouse of the house looking towards the ocean up here. Uh, if I try to convert this box double stop into the pentatonic shape, notice we would play the C oh, and we, and we wouldn't play the B before it, right? We would play the C and then we'd be playing this, uh, this E uh, down here. So from the pentatonic shape on, 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 on this shape, if you see this shape as the pentatonic, you'd be playing uh, boom, boom, and then the outsides of the barbell here, right? So you could convert this shape into the pentatonic if you, if you want to see it that way, which again is just another way to, to visualize it I, I, that might be useful because, and again, it'll make you do different things because most people see the pentatonic, this is the major shape people see. So that's, you can do really creative things just with a few notes. So it's not like you can't be creative with that same shape and you need a different shape, you need to do something crazy. But uh, if, you, if you do see it a different way, you will most likely just because of the way people's hands work, start to start to do different things with it just because of the mechanics of how you're trying to get to do what you're doing with a different with a different shape, you know? So in any case, uh, uh, we're gonna go, and then if I look at the hamburger shape, it's the C is the bottom left bun of the hamburger. I see it as the focal point, the load bearing part of the hamburger because the hamburger is gonna get top heavy when you put a hat on it. And this one is the weight of the hamburger that's holding it down. And then it might need the added support uh, if you add the bill to the hat of the hamburger. Okay, let's go to the next one. We're going to go to the fourth. And so that's going to be here. So the fourth of the minor mode is going to be a uh, five note away perfect fourth. How do I know that? Well, I want to, of course, just see that shape from top to bottom when they're stacked. 
unless it's in the fault line, it's a five note away perfect fourth. I know that because there's five notes between two strings and the inverse therefore is 12 minus five, which is a seven note away perfect fifth, the perfects being inverts of each other. So if I see this shape from top to bottom, I'm like, oh yeah, oh, wait a sec, oh yeah. Five note away perfect fourth, inverse bottom to top, seven note away perfect fifth. Okay, and then I also know that the fourth of mode number six Aeolian is six minus one or five plus the relative position four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's only seven modes, therefore nine minus seven is two. That's the Dorian mode, a minor mode. Where does the Dorian mode live? In the house analogy, it's not in the house because the, door, the minor modes are out of the house except for the Phrygian that lives in the basement. So it hangs out over here in the double stop part with in this case the g the mixolydian and then uh and then also it's at the top floor and then when it's double stop box uh 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 it's on the bottom floor so if i was to think about this shape as my pentatonic shape then of course i would eliminate the b part of the box and i would only be playing the top of the box and then going down to this this part of the box down here the outer part of this box so you could see the pentatonic that way and then in terms of the hamburger analogy most people see the pentatonic as a hamburger and barbell they might not call it that but that's what they typically see it as and the dorian actually encompasses the hamburger so it's not in the barbell at all it's like top left bun of the hamburger to top right bone of a hamburger, it basically you can define the cells covered in the hamburger by the Dorian encompassing it. All right, let's go to the next one. We're going to the fifth of mode number six Aeolian. And so that's going to be do, do. So the fifth. And so the fifth is going to be a seven note away perfect fifth seven note away perfect uh fifth that's and how do i know that well again i want to see that shape that shape might look a little bit more wonky like that's kind of a reach kind of far away but if you play the shape the most logical way to actually see a shape usually and like if you were just to look to map it out and not have to finger it would be like well if that's my starting point this a then i'm going to map it back this way because there's the third and then this would be the fifth and so so and the reason that's easier to see is because it's in order, meaning this is the lowest note, this is the second lowest, and this is and this is the third lowest. So it's not inverted, right? And so and also I can if this is this is the the minor third, and so and if it was over here, it would be the major third. So this fifth is going to be quite common, clearly because it's in the triad. So I, I want to start being able to recognize that shape clearly. I want to recognize all the shapes, but that one is quite important to kind of recognize, even though most people see the fifth leaning forward, because most people are going to play a bar chord going this way, like a, like a power chord. Uh, but, 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 and, and then you can play, you know, your full, your, 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 you know, your bar like that or whatever, but it's also really useful to see it this it's actually easier to see it this way although possibly more difficult to finger it because again it's an order of of uh, of of the one the three and the five and the five is always the same whether it be a major or minor and therefore you can just alternate the the third as to whether it's a major or minor so if you were able to finger this you can pretty easily kind of go up the fretboard from this a to the g and then play the one, three, five, and the fifth will always be the same. It's the third that will change. And then you can go back to the F, play the one, three, five. And then again, this is the note that will change because it's a major here, one, three, five. And then this note changed because now you're on a minor and then here, one, three, five, right? So, so that's pretty, it's pretty useful to do that. You could do the same thing, of course, leaning forward with a bar chord but like I say, you'll get a different sound leaning back uh, this way, uh, which is probably less utilized. And uh, anyway, enough rambling on that. Let's go to the next one. Uh, we're going to go then to the sixth of 
the <coughs> the sixth of the uh, the the mode number six Aeolian, which is going to be because it's a minor mode, eight note away minor six. Now this one's probably not one not a shape that we know as clearly, but it is one that we would like to be able to memorize uh, as well. Uh, you're prob the way to see that is probably like, okay, I know that this one back here is my perfect fifth, and that's uh, that's a, 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 a seven note away perfect fifth, so this one is gonna be an eight note away, therefore, uh, which will be a minor six, might be how we first start kind of visualizing that no note uh so how can i count it up because it's going to be from here 5 10 9 8 inverse 12 minus 8 which is 4 4 note away major third so if i see this position from top to bottom 8 note away major six bottom to top 4 note away major fourth okay and the sixth of mode number six aeolian is six minus one which is five plus the relative position six which is 11, only seven modes, 11 minus seven, seven is seven, eight, nine, 10 is four. That gives me the Lydian mode. So the Lydian mode to me is the least used major mode because you got the major scale Ionian mode, in other words, and you've got the Mixolydian, I think are the two most used. And then the Lydian, which makes sense to me because it tells me why it's not in the pentatonic, right? So if I see this shape in terms of the house analogy, it's it's in C major, it's the major house. It's in the bottom floor though, not on the top floor like C is and it's still looking towards the ocean. And if I convert this shape into the pentatonic, then I would be eliminating the, the, the top left of the box and the bottom right of the box. I would only be playing this boom, boom, boom to here to the outside of the box. So I'd be going duh, duh, if you see if you convert that to a, a pentatonic meaning the phrygian or the lydian would be removed if i think about it in terms of the hamburger and the barbell shape remember we're in the barbell which would look like this except for the fault line down here everything is shifted up so therefore the the, the ends of the barbell are what we play here to here the middle of the barbell where the hands would go is staggered and i imagine that's because it should be in the middle but you can't put it in the middle because it's a two boxes so these two like average out so it's kind of like in the middle so <clears throat> so there's where it is so you wouldn't play it if it was pentatonic but if you have to add it uh if you're going to be converting to the seven note major scale from this barbell to the to the to the to the seven note okay makes perfect sense all right let's go to the next one I don't even know what you're talking about, but I like the stories. I listen for the stories. I don't even play the guitar. Uh, all right, let's go to the next one. We're gonna say, all right, so now we're on the seventh. The seventh of the minor mode is of course a minor seventh, which is 10 notes away. And so I wanna just be able to see that shape and say, okay, that's a 10 note away minor seven, uh, unless it's on the fault line, but we're not there yet. So that's the 10 note away minor seven standard and how do I know? Because I can go, this is five and then 10, counting it up in terms of fives as I go up the strings. And the inverse 12 minus uh, 10 would be two. That would be a two note away major second. So if I see that shape from top to bottom, that's a 10 note away minor seven from bottom to top, two note away major second. Remembering that the inverse of a minor is typically a major. All right. The, uh, the the seventh of mode number six aeolian is six one minus one which is five plus seven seven eight nine ten eleven twelve there's only seven modes twelve minus seven uh is five right is that right yeah i think so and that's going to give me the mixolydian so that gives me the mixolydian and the mixolydian is kind of like the minor mode uh in that I mean, I'm sorry, it's a major mode, but it's most like the minor because it has like that minor seven in it. So it basically, so if I, if I look at my analogy, it's actually a major mode, but it doesn't hang out in major's house over here in the house analogy because it has that minor seven. So it hangs out with the minors over here in the double stop part, uh, hanging with the Dorian on top. And then, and then when you go to the 
Uh, other side, it's actually in the two note per string flat uh, here, and it's and it's on on the left side. And you can also call that the meat of the hamburger in terms of the and so if I was to convert this shape to a to a pentatonic, then you would be playing the mixolydian. The mixolydian would be uh, played within it, so you'd be playing uh, on this shape. Uh, you, you, you'd be playing the uh, the the outside boom boom on the mixolydian. So you'd be playing the top of the house C to D, and then here to here. In terms of the hamburger barbell shape. We're in the barbell, which over here, it's easier to see because it's not shifted up by the kink in the tuning. And we'd be over here on the right side of the barbell. And the right side of the barbell has the heavy hitters of the majors, which is going to be the C major and then the mixolydian. And it kicked out the lydian, which uh, so it's not in, in the five note pentatonic. It's in the middle, as we saw. All right. And then we go back up to the octave. Whew. All right. Let's tr let's go back the other way, but let's try a joke here <clears throat> before I go back. All right, we're all just dust in the wind, man. All just dust in the wind. Actually, not you know that's not entirely true. That's not really exactly true. We're more like we're more like wet dust. We're not like dry dust, you know. We're wet dust because because dust is totally dry, and we're clearly not completely dry. We're we're like we're more like damp dust trying to hold together against the wind. Damp dust clumped together like a like a snotty booger. We're not really dust, we're more like a snotty booger trying to clump together against the wind, hoping we have enough snotty glue to resist the wind blowing us apart. That's what really is going on here. That's why the song Running Against the Wind, running against the wind it's such a radical song man because running against the wind instead of with it increases like the wind capacity resulting in our snotty boogerousness being being dried up more quickly at which point if it gets totally dried up we actually will be dust in the wind at that point but let's not get ahead of ourselves okay we're not dust in the wind like yet not right now we're just a snotty booger right now. Maybe at some point in the future. And I, and I for one, don't want to be dust in the wind, at least not yet. I'm quite happy as this snotty booger trying to hold, my, hold myself together against the breeze. So, so too, too, much, too much wind and you become dust in the wind, man. Too much wind and you become dust in the wind. But too much water causes you to just be just be dissipated snot in the pool of water like if you were stuck in the ocean or, or something like that you'd just be a dissipated snot pool so t t too much wind or too much water is not good and and being just dissipated snot doesn't sound any more appealing than being like dust in the wind man that's why life's all about balance we need to we need we need just the right amount of snot to hold the, this booger body together, but not too much, so much snot that we turn into a snot puddle. So, so a, a booger, a, a, bo a booger needs, needs to be firm, but not rigid, solid, but not too sharp, right? It's all about, it's all about balance, man. All right, I don't know. That wasn't that. That was my rant about dust in the wind. Why are you trying to get ahead of yourselves? We're not dust yet. We're not dust yet. Crying out loud. We're just a, we're just a snotty booger at this point. I'm gonna. Okay, let's go back the other way. We're going. We're going from this A backwards. Uh. We're down here. Okay, so let's go from the eight back to the seven. Eight back to the seven. Uh, we know the seventh of mode number six, Aeolian, is a 10 note away minor seven. So 10 note away minor seven, if I go back to here, measuring from uh, this point. So that's gonna be then, and how do I know that? Well, if I count, uh, if I count this way, it would be now I have to go up the fault in the tuning 
it would be five up here, four, three, two. So going from here to here would be a two note away, uh, two note away major second, inverse 12 minus two would be a 10 note away minor seven. So if I look at this shape, I say, okay, wait a sec. That's a two note away minor uh, second if I think about measuring it from the G, which usually would be back one, pinky to pointer, but because of the fault line, it's there. So normally I would see that shape and say, that's a that's a three that's a three note away uh, minor third, but no, because of the fault line here, it's been shifted up and now it's a two note away uh, major second. So we have to deal with the fault line across this whole thing because it's right there and we're measuring right above it. Okay, and so then we're gonna go and then, and so if I play it the other way from bottom to top, therefore, that's a 10 note away mi minor seven. All right, let's go back to here. And I'm gonna say, all right, now we're on the, the sixth. The sixth of the minor scale or Aeolian is an eight note away minor six. I can see this shape. I wanna see this shape in the fault line and say, okay, wait a sec, normally that shape uh, from top to bottom would be a five note away perfect fourth. But when I see it down here, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, what's this up? It's like five, four. It's a four note away major third. So, so, and then the inverse of that would be 12 minus four, which would be an eight note away major six. So when I see this top to bottom, I'm like, okay, that is a four note away major third. And the inverse from bottom to top is an eight note away minor six. And then if I go d back to the fifth and we go back to the fifth, the fifth is going to be a seven note away perfect fifth. Now, again, when I see a seven note, when I see a perfect fifth, normally I would be like, wait a sec, the fifth should be up here from if I was measuring from uh, the if I was if I was measuring this way from the E, I would see the shape as like a flat. Uh, five, uh, yeah, like a, like a, like a, uh, yeah, flat five, but, uh, but here it's going to be a five note away. If I measure from the E, it's five notes away, and that would be a perfect fourth. And the inverse of that would be 12 minus five, which would be a seven note away perfect fifth. So if I see that shape, I'm going to say top to bottom should be a, f a five note away perfect fourth bottom to top therefore is a seven note away perfect fifth all right let's bring it back to the the d or the fourth back to the fourth and that's going to be from here to this d right there and that's going to be a of uh, the fourth is a five note away uh perfect fourth how do i know that well if i see this shape it's going to be five and then ten up here nine eight seven so that's a seven note away perfect fifth now again i should be saying well usually the seven note away perfect fifth from the d would be back one more but because of the kink in the tuning it's shifted up 12 minus seven is a five note away perfect fourth so if i see that shape because it's over the fault line that shape is now a a five note away perfect fifth from the d to the a and the inverse therefore bottom to top uh, is a five note away perfect fourth. So if I, wait a sec, from top to bottom is a seven note away perfect fifth, from bottom to top, five note away perfect fourth. All right, let's go back to the third. The third, and I'm measuring to this one down here. And so I'm saying, okay, that shape uh, is like here to here is gonna be the third is a defining characteristic of a major or minor mode. It's a minor mode, of course, main minor. That's a three note away minor third. So the three note away minor third, when I see that shape, I'm thinking, well, if I measured from top to bottom like this, normally I would say, well, that looks like it's a 10 note away uh, minor seven from the C, but here it's gonna be, it's gonna be five and then 10 because of the fault line up here and then nine. So it's a nine note away uh, major six, this shape, if I measured from C to A, inverse is 12 minus nine, uh, nine, 10, which is a three note away minor third. So if I see this shape like this from top to bottom, the way I'd normally measure it, it's gonna be a nine note away, which would be a major six, and therefore from bottom to top, three note away minor third. 
and then we go back to uh, the second, back to the second. And so we're going to go do do. So, and then that's going to be here. Wait a second. I'm back to the second, which is the B. And so we're here and okay. So that's going to be a two note away major second. How do I know? Well, if I count down this way, it's going to be five and then 10. So that's a 10 note away from the B, 10 note away, which would be a minor seven, which normally would be like here to here. But because the fault line it's shifted up here, 10 note away, uh, minor seven, 12 minus 10 is two note away, major second. So if I go from top to bottom, that's gonna be a, a 10 note away, minor seven from bottom to top, two note away, major second. All right. I'm getting a little tired here. Let's just, let's just noodle around for a bit. I was still working on these shapes. Still messing, still thinking about like these leaning back shapes that I was looking at and just trying to noodle around incorporating like this scale going, like if I took this shape, which is a C and this shape, which is a D and then put them together, I get the scale leaning back C, D, E, F, G, A, and then B, C. And if I did that up here, I could do the same thing. So that would be the Ionian mode, and then the Dorian mode would be D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. And then the Aeolian mode would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And I was trying to like noodle around just with those scales a little bit. up here
Thank you.